This is Story Recapped. Today I'm gonna explain an adventure, family, and fantasy film called Labyrinth. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Sarah Williams recites lines from the book titled The Labyrinth. Suddenly, the bell tower chimes, alerting Sarah of the time, so she runs home under the pouring rain. In the house, her stepmother Irene scolds Sarah for arriving late. She and her husband will head out for dinner and needs Sarah to babysit her brother. Sarah complains that they leave every weekend, and they don't even ask her if she has plans of her own. Irene points out that she never mentions anything to them, and even encourages Sarah to go on dates with boys. Her father, Robert, walks in, unaware of the tension, so Sarah runs up to her room, exclaiming that she can't do anything right. Irene complains that Sarah treats her like an evil stepmother, so Robert heads up to talk to his daughter. When her father knocks on the door in her room, Sarah complains that there's nothing to talk about. Instead, Robert just tells her that they put her baby brother to bed already, so they're leaving. Sarah sarcastically yells that her father really wanted to talk to her after just a few weak knocks. She notices that one of her stuffed toys, Lancelot, is missing, so she storms into her parents' room to retrieve it. Her half-brother Toby cries while Sarah begs for someone to take her away. Sarah sarcastically tells Toby a fairy tale of a young girl forced by her stepmother to babysit her spoiled child. The Goblin King fell in love with the girl, so he gave her powers. Sarah adds that the girl asked the goblins for help, so the goblins promised to take the baby away to set her free. Unbeknownst to her, goblins from another world are awakened by her words. Sarah continues that the Goblin King intended to turn the baby into a goblin, making the girl think twice until she could no longer take her situation. Tired of the baby's crying, Sarah picks up Toby from his crib and cradles him, all while still threatening the baby that she'll have the goblins take him. The goblins in another world await as Sarah playfully calls out to the Goblin King to take the baby away from her. The goblins are disappointed because she didn't say it correctly. Sarah gets exasperated and says she wishes she knew how to make the Goblin King take Toby, so a goblin answers the right words she needs. Seemingly having heard the words, Sarah puts Toby to bed and says she wishes the goblins took him away. She then leaves the room but notices that Toby's crying suddenly stops. She checks the crib only to find it empty. An owl suddenly distracts her from the window while the goblins run around and hide from her. Sarah turns at every sound, barely catching a glimpse of the goblins. Suddenly, the window opens and the owl swoops in. When Sarah looks back, she finds the goblin king Jareth standing before her. Sarah begs for her brother back stressing that she didn't mean what she wished for. However, Jareth simply tells her to forget about Toby. He conjures a crystal ball that he claims would show her her dreams. He offers it to her as a gift in exchange for the baby. She refuses, so Jareth turns the ball into a snake then throws it at her. The snake instantly turns into a scarf around her neck, and the goblins laugh at her. Jareth points outside and tells Sarah that Toby is in his castle, which is in the middle of a massive labyrinth. Suddenly, Sarah finds herself outside the goblin city. Jareth tells her to turn back, but Sarah insists that she can't, so he gives her 13 hours to solve the labyrinth before he turns Toby into a goblin. He disappears, so Sarah begins her journey. Before entering, she finds a dwarf peeing into a pond and notices fairies fluttering nearby. The dwarf sprays the fairy with bug spray, so Sarah helps it up. However, the fairy bites her, and the dwarf scoffs, noting how she knows nothing about fairies. When Sarah comments that he's horrible, the dwarf corrects her that his name is Hoggle. Sarah asks where the door to the labyrinth is, but Hoggle insists that she's not asking the right questions. Sarah then asks how she can get inside the labyrinth, so Hoggle points behind her where a door suddenly opens. Reluctantly, Sarah enters and asks Hoggle which path he'd go to, but he answers that he won't go in at all. Sarah comments that he's no help, and Hoggle shoots back that she takes things for granted. Sarah sarcastically thanks Hoggle as he leaves. She picks a path, but after minutes of walking, Sarah complains that the path just continues straight forward. Then, she wonders if she just thinks that it does, so she runs across the path, but still, it doesn't lead her anywhere. Sarah sits on the floor in frustration, 
A worm greets her and invites her inside his home, but she refuses. She complains that the path just keeps going on and on, but the worm points out that she's been passing by openings. He points to the wall across her and tells her to walk through it. Sarah carefully approaches the wall and finally notices that it's split into two walls with a path hidden. She thanks the worm, but the worm advises her to take the other direction. Sarah finds a series of different paths and hears Toby's cries from the castle. Later, Sarah uses her lipstick from her pocket to draw markers so she doesn't get lost. When she leaves, however, a goblin living under the stone she drew on turns it upside down, leaving it unmarked again. Sarah continues down the labyrinth and finally realizes that the stones moved after she drew on them. Goblins appear behind her even though there was a dead end earlier, leading her to realize that the labyrinth keeps changing. The goblins offer her two doors, one of which will lead to the castle, while the other will lead to death. Sarah asks which one is the correct door, but the goblins warn her that one of them always tells the truth and the other always lies, and she can only ask one of them. Sarah asks one goblin if the other one will tell her that his door leads to the castle. After much thought, the goblin answers yes, so she figures that the other door leads to the castle. Sarah confidently walks into the other door but falls into a trap where hundreds of hands grab her. The hands insist that they're helping her, and to prove it, they let her go, and she drops down. When they grab her again, they ask which way she wants to go. Sarah chooses to go down, so they slowly let her descend into the dungeon. Jareth watches her progress from the crystal ball and laughs that Sarah would have to start all over again. In the dungeon, Hoggle lights a candle, much to Sarah's delight. Hoggle offers a way out of the labyrinth, but Sarah insists that she's not giving up. She offers Hoggle her bracelet in exchange for helping her get as close as he can to the castle. Hoggle accepts and uses a wooden door to create a path. When they leave the dungeon, the walls warn them not to go further. Hoggle explains that the walls are false alarms whose job is to lead them astray when they're heading the right way. Suddenly, a crystal ball rolls past them, and Jareth reveals himself. The Goblin King accuses Hoggle of helping Sarah, but he insists that he was tricking her out of the labyrinth. Jareth threatens to send him to the Bog of Eternal Stench for betraying him, and Hoggle begs for forgiveness. Then, he turns to Sarah, who claims that the labyrinth is easy. Jareth smiles and shortens her time to give her a challenge. When Sarah complains that it's not fair, he chuckles that she says that often. He then throws the crystal ball into the darkness, and it turns into a machine that cleans the tunnels. Hoggle and Sarah run away, but they end up at a dead end. They push a wall until it collapses, saving them from getting run over by the cleaner. Hoggle finds a ladder, but Sarah argues that she can't trust him anymore after what he told Jareth. Hoggle points out that she has no other choice, so she climbs the ladder to follow him. They reach the surface, but Hoggle insists that it's as far as he'd go. Sarah argues that he should help her further, and when he refuses, she steals his stash of jewelry to force him to help. Another goblin arrives, and Sarah asks him how to get to the castle. The goblin simply tells her that the way forward is sometimes the way back before falling asleep. His hat tells her to pay him for his help, so Sarah gives him her ring. While traversing around the labyrinth, they hear a scream. Hoggle cowardly runs away, abandoning Sarah. She investigates on her own and sees goblins battling a trapped large beast. Rocks start rolling towards Sarah, so she throws them at the goblins, making them attack each other. When the goblins leave, Sarah frees the beast, who introduces himself as Ludo. Once he's free, Ludo calls Sarah a friend. Sarah then asks Ludo how to get to the castle, but he doesn't know. Two doors appear out of nowhere, whose knockers begin arguing. One of the knockers has the ring stuck in his mouth, so Sarah helps to take it off. They tell her to knock to open the door, so Sarah puts the ring back and knocks to open the door. Sarah and Ludo enter a forest, but Ludo gets scared. Suddenly, Ludo falls into a hole that disappears when Sarah turns. Sarah searches for Ludo while Hoggle traverses on his own. Hoggle hears Sarah calling for help, so he runs in her direction but finds Jareth instead. Hoggle lies that he was still leading Sarah outside the labyrinth. He tries to leave, claiming that he'll continue leading Sarah away. Jareth then tosses him a peach and tells him to give it to Sarah. Hoggle gets concerned that it'll hurt Sarah, but Jareth berates him for caring about her. He reminds him about his threat if he doesn't follow orders, so Hoggle leaves with his head down. 
The fire gang suddenly corners Sarah. They sing and dance around a campfire, but Sarah gets scared when they start playing with their severed heads. They try to remove her head as well, but she complains that it doesn't come off like theirs. She starts throwing their heads away in anger before running away. The fire gang runs after her, and Sarah ends up at a dead end. Luckily, Hoggle drops a rope for her to climb. Sarah hugs and kisses him for saving her, but they fall into a trap door. Sarah helps Hoggle up and realizes that they're in the bog of eternal stench. Hoggle complains that they were dropped there because she kissed him. Still, Sarah insists that he came to help her since he's her friend. Their path breaks, making them fall and discover that Ludo is there as well. Sarah sees a bridge, so they carefully make their way to it. However, the guard, Sir Didymus, insists that they can't cross without his permission. Ludo picks him up, allowing Hoggle to cross alone. Didymus fights back, but Ludo easily throws him off. Ludo grabs a branch to hit him, but Didymus evades his attacks. Happy with their battle, Didymus pays his respect to Ludo. Still, he doesn't allow them to pass without his permission, so Sarah asks for his permission. After much thought, Didymus permits them, so Sarah walks forward. The bridge, however, collapses immediately, leaving Sarah hanging from a branch. Ludo calls on rocks to create a path for Sarah to cross, so she reunites with Hoggle on the other side. Ludo crosses the path, and Didymus calls on his dog, Ambrosius to follow the group. While the others aren't looking, Hoggle attempts to throw the peach into the swamp, but Jareth's voice booms overhead, warning him not to do it. As the group continues, Jareth watches them from the crystal ball and teases that she'll forget about Toby once Sarah eats the peach. The group starts to get hungry, so Hoggle offers Sarah the peach. Sarah eats it then pauses, noting that it tastes strange. Feeling guilty, Hoggle runs away, leaving Sarah in a daze. Jareth sends a few crystal balls into the air, which floats towards Sarah. From the crystal balls, Sarah sees a vision of herself in a beautiful gown. She dreams of being in a masquerade ball where she dances with Jareth. Suddenly, she feels crowded by the other guests and notices the clock. Sarah panics and breaks a glass wall to escape. Sarah wakes from the dream and drops into a junkyard. While getting up, she stumbles upon the junk lady. Sarah realizes that she can't remember what she was doing, but she knows she was looking for something. The junk lady gives her Lancelot and then leads her into a shed that looks like her bedroom inside. Relieved, Sarah jumps back into bed, concluding that she just dreamed everything. She heads outside to check on her father, but finds that the door still leads to the junkyard. The junk lady enters and starts pushing all her precious belongings on her. Still, Sarah can't help but feel that something's wrong. She finds her copy of the labyrinth, which reminds her of her mission. Sarah concludes that everything she's seeing is junk, and her bedroom breaks down. Ludo and Didymus pull her out and point her to the entrance to the Goblin City. As they head there, Hoggle watches them. At the entrance, Didymus aggressively tries to wake the guard to open the door, so Sarah calms him down. Ludo opens the door instead, so they cautiously enter. The door closes behind them, and a metal door with a robot closes in front. The robot approaches, and metal spikes appear behind them, trapping them. The robot swings a giant axe, and they struggle to evade it. Hoggle appears above and throws off the goblin controlling the robot. Hoggle then drives the robot, but he struggles with the controls. He ends up breaking the robot, so he jumps before it erupts in sparks. Hoggle apologizes to Sarah for giving her the peach, but says he'll accept if she doesn't forgive him. Still, Sarah and the rest forgive him and commend him for his bravery. A goblin reports to Jareth that Sarah is in the city, so he orders his army to stop her. The group reaches the castle but is blocked by armed goblins, so they run away. Didymus gets separated as Ambrosius gets scared while Sarah and the rest hide. Didymus manages to stop the dog so he can face the battle head on, but they get cornered. Didymus jousts with one of the goblins and defeats him, but Ambrosius abandons him and hides. Sarah and the others hide in a house that the goblins surround. Ludo reaches the roof and howls while Sarah and Hoggle defend themselves. Soon, many rocks attack the goblins at Ludo's command, driving the army away. Sarah, Ludo, and Hoggle fight to the castle while the rocks continue to attack the goblins and their cannons. Didymus and Ambrosius join them at the castle doors. The group enters, and, with only minutes left, Sarah hurries to find Toby. The others offer to help, but Sarah insists that she has to face Jareth alone. 
Her friends tell her that should she need them, she should call them. Sarah ends up in a maze of confusing staircases and finds Jareth appearing out of nowhere, defying gravity. He throws a crystal ball and it goes straight to Toby. Sarah desperately tries to go to her brother, but Toby starts climbing the stairs, making it more difficult for her to reach him. She soon finds him by a gap on the floor, so Sarah jumps to get to him. However, the room breaks apart as she lands. Sarah finds herself alone with Jareth. She demands Toby back, but he points out that he'd done everything else for her. Sarah recites the line from the book, where the girl declares that she demands the child from the king. He stops her and offers her everything she wants as long as she remains loyal and loves him. Sarah pauses as she can't remember the final line from the book again. But after much thought, she declares that he has no power over her. Jareth tosses the crystal ball, and when it lands on Sarah's hand, he and the ball disappear. Jareth turns into the owl that flies away, and Sarah finds herself back in her house. She runs to the master bedroom and is relieved to see Toby sleeping in his crib. Finally accepting her baby brother, she gives him Lancelot before leaving. Soon, her parents return while Sarah is cleaning up her room. When she turns to her mirror, she sees her friends saying goodbye, promising that they'll be with her when she needs them. Sarah tells Hoggle that she needs them, surprising him. When she turns, she happily reunites with her friends from the goblin world. The owl watches from outside and flies away. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.